And right now it's time for that time when we talk to our special guest. Tonight's special guest is stage director Alison Wiegand. Alison is the director of the latest Auckland Theatre Company production, The Heretic. A great comedy written by Richard Bean and performed at Auckland's Maidman Theatre. The play sets out to prove that all common sense goes out the window when anyone opposes the drumbeat of climate change and its politically correct theology. Be watching tonight to win three double passes. We welcome Alison Guigan as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. It's a wonderful welcome to Alison Quigan. Thank you. Director, actor, well, just about everything. Well, wonderful you, life. Well, uh, yeah, I suppose so. Uh, somebody said if you make your passion your work, then you never work again. So I guess that's me. And uh, your baby boomerhood credentials. You're a, you're a just turned, what, 40, is it? With <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so sweet. No, I've just turned 60, but so, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're a good baby boomer. Yeah. Classic baby boomer. Classic. Well, welcome to the program. Thank you. Life doesn't stop at 50. We are still alive. Well, hopefully. And still contributing, yeah. <laughs> now, you're contributing by being the director of a wonderful play called The Heretic. And uh, if it was 400 years ago, well, you'd be burnt at the stake. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm just the director. I didn't write it. But yes, I suppose. But even having it at the I know. It. That's right. True. So um, all, those, all those years ago, 400 years ago, Galileo, of course, um, he uh, went up against the established thoughts of the day. Mm. Even today, we, we're supposed to be enlightened, aren't mm. we? Mm. But anyone that spoke out about uh, global warming was um, labelled a... A heretic, mm. and th that's the name of the play, isn't it? And that's what it's about. Yeah, it is about um, how, if in, in this case, it's a doctor, uh, it's a doctor in the uh, University of uh, Yorkshire, and she is Dr. Diane Castle, and she is a senior lecturer in Earth Sciences, and she's saying, uh, "I'm a skeptic, mm. not because I'm d just a skeptic. I'm a skeptic because the science doesn't work." Yeah. And so she's a, a scientist, she believes in pure science. She doesn't believe in it being adjusted by, per, by popular mm. thought Good. or um, by political uh, agendas. In fact, she's saying science needs to be without an agenda. So she's only interested in getting the science right. What's the pathway to you directing this wonderful play writ written by Richard Bean? I've been directing for... Um, 28 years. 28 uh, years? I know. Uh, <laughs> doesn't bear thinking about. Uh, except that, you know, you just direct one play after another, really. Yes. Um, I started training as an actor 35 years ago um, up here in Auckland. Um, and uh, since then, as my career has gone forward, I have needed to add extra skills in, in order to make a living, really. But also because of my interests, you know, I, I like, I love acting, but I also love putting the whole picture together, which is when you're directing. And of course, I love writing because you can start with an idea and take it right through to a performance. One of the reasons they asked me to do it was because I'm very good at comedy. And uh, in order to get comedy right, you need to have tragedy just right. Exactly. So because comedy is tragedy, yes, yes. but with better timing. It becomes funny by the accompanying tragedy. Absolutely, it, yes. yeah. I mean, the person who slips on the banana skin is, is not actually very happy about life. <laughs> Whereas for those of us who watch it, we go, oh, oh, I know what that feels like. Oh, I'm so glad it's not me. And so with this play, it is billed as a comedy, but actually, like all good comedies, it's based it's in a, a real truth. Yeah, serious truth. When they asked you and they said, uh, Alison, we want you to direct a, a play about climate change, change, global warming. What did you think? Oh, this could be a bit rocky. Did you think that? Or I thought I'm a bit out of my depth. Mm. Um, I thought science, oh gosh, I don't know whether I know anything about this. But as I got into the play, I realised that it's pure science is like pure art. It's mm. like pure maths. It's, it's, a, it's a thing within itself. And I enjoy the logic of it. I enjoy the journey. So, I mean, I, uh, I didn't feel, I, I sort of felt overwhelmed by the science, but then once I got into it, I started to understand it. The play itself makes you look or feel intelligent. And I think that's great. And, and you've said that, uh, I mean, the play is already in action. And in fact, it's going through to the 10th of August, mm -hmm. but you've 
seen people standing outside mm -hmm. after the performance arguing amongst yeah. themselves. Absolutely, and with me too, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm sort of saying, oh, you know, I'm a greenie, I really believe in this, this, yeah. is, this is all going to happen. And I'm thinking, well, all I'm saying is with this play, and, and it's the writer that's saying it, we're just helping them along the way. Um, what I'm saying is make sure that you think and just don't accept I mean, we get very reliant on one group of people saying, oh, this is happening, yes. and these are the facts. Yes. And you're going, actually, are those the facts from a particular point of view, or are they the facts? Um, one, of the things, one of the other themes in the play is that universities are re no longer reliant um, on, on government, government grants. Government grants. Yeah. And so therefore they have to go elsewhere for money. Looking for money. Exactly. So therefore that does that tarnish their ability to be independent? Does that corrupt their yeah. science? And there are um, there are suggestions in the play that it does corrupt their science, that in order to get this funding they have to actually... And then they have to give the answer that suits the person that's funding them. Precisely. So it becomes a, a cash cow, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. So at one stage there, around about uh, 2005, 2006, it became very popular to, uh, for a university to get a major grant, say nine or ten million dollars, and we'll do all this research. Mm -hmm. And then if they looked at the paper and said, well, no, there's nothing really much happening, they couldn't really give that report, could mm, they? Mm, and mm. this is really the centre of this whole play, yeah, isn't it? That's that, the uh, very first scene where she, has, she is told to delay publication of her research, which says there is no sea level rising. Mm. And so she's going, oh, excuse me, why not? And because it doesn't suit the department, uh, yeah. the, the Faculty of Earth Sciences, because they're in the running to get a very major research grant, which will deal with this, but they don't want the, her information to go out too soon, because it will, it's, not the, it's not the message that they want to send. And so it's, it's dangerous. It, the play itself makes its case. And I, I think it's really important. I mean, Dr. Diane Castle, she talks about that um, global warming is actually a, a regular phenomenon mm. and that it happened in medieval times, it happened in Roman times, and, and, that the, and the, uh, the inhabitants adjusted their lifestyle and then it changed again. Um, so uh, I, I don't come out either way. I, I mean, m m I, if I come, if, if anything has happened, it's made me question information that comes that is delivered to us, and not just about global warming. I mean, government departments and, and, and politicians and um, uh, NGOs, they're often actually delivering news so that, uh, that actually is of their agenda. Yes. And so uh, you, you have to go, well, what, what was the result you were looking for in the first place? Are you, in, are you in fact, just delivering on that, res on that um, ideal for you? And so I'm, I'm just interested to know what the truth is. I don't necessarily believe the uh, disaster junkies. I don't necessarily believe the other. Well, that's what the play is saying, you know, that some people need to have a disaster every time they open it. Like, I mean, yes. if you look at the, the earthquake. The disaster junkies, what a great, that, it really sums them up, doesn't it? Well, it does it's, sometimes, yeah. yeah. Because if you look at, the, say, the earthquake, for instance, in Wellington, um, there are some reports that actually say everyone was screaming around and terrified. And there are others that say, oh, well, we, it, it was alarming, but we've actually dealt with this and we dealt with and sometimes I just want to know the facts. Mm. I just need to know the facts. I don't need to know the emotional mm. um, uh, build-up that some media want to actually portray. When we open the Herald in the morning, we need, they need to tell us that the world, uh, that the islands in the Pacific are sinking, that yeah. the glaciers are retreating, and the, um, the largest uh, sea ice melt in history. Mm. Uh, there it is. You know, it's like it's strident. It's going to sell that newspaper that day, or it it, it gives us our our daily uh, our, da uh, our daily fix of fear. Narrative fix. Yeah, and fear, of course, spells false expectations appearing mm. real. Mm, mm. So, well, I mean, that's what's happening in the play. And there's a suggestion that um, in, that research is being doctored to uh, uh, to to alarm people mm. more quickly. Um, figures are changed, you know, there's a typo in one report that says um, uh, Edinburgh, Castle, Edinburgh Castle will be under, uh, under three foot of snow by 2050. And, and, and they're saying, oh, well, that was a typo, actually. But no, they put it in deliberately in order to alarm yeah. people, in order to get action. I think if the play teaches us anything is to be vigilant and to make your own mind up.
it has many elements to it. Um, it is comedic, it is tragic, it is, um, it is thoughtful, it is insightful, it's provocative. Uh, and so I, I hear people laughing with recognition. I hear people um, going silent about some things. Uh, so yeah, the response is actually really good. So we must emphasize that it is a comedy. So um, we want people to uh, come and see this wonderful play called The Heretic and uh, not to be thinking that they're going to be blasted with science. It's a comedy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and yeah. there's some great lines, some great laughs. So, uh, is the, And that's what you intended right from the start, wasn't it? That, the, that you can't deliver a message without a little bit of laughter. On Absolutely. It. That is so true, actually. Um, Richard Bean is the same guy who wrote One Man, Two Governors. So, uh, yes, he, he does deal in comedy. He's a stand-up comedian as well. Mm. So when you can hear that in the dialogue, he's actually really great at delivering a line. So he takes a swipe at quite a few things. <clears throat> so it's, it's actually, uh, he, he's a very well-balanced writer. It's very witty writing. I know that Richard Bean's view is quite, quite strongly um, uh, sceptic, but actually the play deals with both sides. Yeah. Because you've got two young people who are um, passionate about um, the planet and as um, Di Dr. Diane Castle says, um, uh, she says, you, you want to save the planet? And, and he says, yes, yes. And she says, well, you can't. But you can save the human race. Yes. So, you know, the, yeah. the, the planet will the take planet care of itself, she says. Now, what a great bunch of actors you've got. Um, Jennifer Ward Leland. I mean, she is just wonderful, isn't she? And and I'm not sure how to pronounce her second name, but it's Stelios anyway. Uh, and I've seen him on Sh Shortland Street. He's a he's a great actor, isn't mm, he? Mm. Uh, Stelios Yakmos. Yakmos. Yes. Mm, mm. He'd probably get some funny variations of that in his life, wouldn't he? Yes, I think so. Uh, apparently, yes, I think it's Yakmos. Yeah. Yakmus. So good actors to work with. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, mm. and totally committed and um, really. Um, well skilled as well, every one of them. You know, it's been extraordinary. I worked with Jennifer Ward Leland in the late eighties when just mm. after she graduated and she was amazing then and so now it's fantastic working with her. I mean she has to play the convincing role as the skeptic. Yeah. But is she a skeptic? Oh, we never asked. We never asked. No. Don't tell. What no. <laughs> well, no. When the reality is, because she plays the lines, you know, and as if she and that's was what one, a professional actor yeah, absolutely, is, whether yeah. she believes it or not, she can deliver the yeah. opposite, to what she thinks, or yeah, or it's great. Great skill, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, she has to, for instance, uh, she has to play this woman and she has to fall in love with this man that she's barely met before, really. And she has to have a, a, a physical relationship with that person. So therefore, and she is the mother of to, uh, of a young girl who is anorexic in the program. So she, of course, you just, uh, you just mm. take all that on board and uh, that's part of the job. Now tonight is the, uh, the 29th of um, July and the play runs for another 11 days in fact, doesn't right. it? So, or even more, um, 12 days. Yeah. But, so I say to all our viewers that if you would love to see a great play like The Heretic, it's at the Maidment Theatre in Auckland mm -hmm. and you can book online. You certainly make can. Make sure you get a good seat. Mm -hmm. But what about our viewers that may be, might be able to afford it but would like to, uh, to win a contest and, uh, and s s say, um, three of our, our lucky viewers could take their partner along. So three double passes to see The Heretic. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> that would be great, yeah. So what we need is a simple answer or a simple question and answer. And I suggest, what is the name of the play? Mm -hmm. And it's called The Heretic. It's at the Maven Theatre. So just email Jared at The Beat Goes On. And in the subject line, just put The Heretic and we'll do the draw. And we'll do it very fast because we've only got those 10 days. So uh, get those entries in as fast as possible. Now, what about yourself, uh, Alison? What's the next play? Do you, um, are you already in pre-planning for the next one? Or? Oh yes, I, I am the performing arts manager at Mangari Art Centre, so I am in constant uh, communication with clients who are bringing in plays into the uh, theatre there and uh, developing new ones that are going to be put on next year. So uh, my job is kind of to bring in new productions into Mangari Art Centre. When's your first movie coming out as oh. a director? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you think I should do one? As Hollywood called you. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a theatre director. I mean, I would love to do a little bit of um, film and television, but um, no, no, theatre's my thing, so I'm very happy there. Oh, well, look, it's been great talking to you, Alison. <laughs> Wonderful to talk to you.